Good morning, Peters Row. God bless you all. Who's happy for this wonderful cold morning, huh? Woo! So, we are going to praise our Lord today. We are going to start with Keep Me in the Moment. I've been thinking about time And where does it go? How can I stop my life from passing me by? I don't know I've been thinking about family And how it's going so fast Well, I wake up one morning just wishing that I could go back Maybe I can make a change and let you change me. So with all of my heart, this is my prayer. Singing, oh Lord, keep me in the moment. Help me live with my eyes wide open. Cause I don't want to miss what you have for me. Singing, oh Lord, show me what matters. Throw away what I'm chasing after. I don't wanna miss what you have for me. Keep me in the moment. Oh, keep me in the moment. Keep me in the moment. Cause I don't wanna miss what you have for me. When I wake up in the morning, Lord, search my heart. Don't let me stray. I just wanna stay where you are. All I got is one shot. promise you hold so it's all eyes on you until the day you call me home sing it oh lord keep me in the moment help me live with my eyes wide open cause i don't want to miss what you have for me submit our lives to him and help him help us it's important to have him guide our lives throughout this wonderful life that we have we have psalms 27 13 i remain confident of this i will see the goodness of the lord in the land of the living All throughout my history, your faithfulness has walked beside me. The winter storms made way for spring. In every season, from where I'm standing, I see.
sometimes we don't see it, you are all over our life. Father, sometimes we don't even know where we stand. We don't know whether we're coming or going. But amazingly, you do. And so, Father, today we come before you asking for not just your blessing. But we're asking for your direction, for your ministry, and Lord, for your control. Take control of our lives. Lord, help us to understand that when you're in control of our lives, things go better. Things make sense. And we always arrive at the destination we need to go. And so, Father, forgive us for the many times that we choose paths that are not according to your will. And so today we come before you asking for your presence in our lives, your spirit in everything we do, and your control in each one of us for your glory. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, our Savior. And the people of God said, Amen. I speak, I speak Jesus, to fear, to anxiety, to all depression, to every addiction, we all lay them down on his feet. I just want to speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind. Because I know there is peace within your presence. I speak Jesus. Till every dark addiction starts to break Declaring there is hope and there is freedom I speak Jesus Sing it all together Your name is God
Shout Jesus from the mountains, Jesus in the streets, Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name, Jesus. My name's Simon Remington. Uh, if you are watching online with us uh, on YouTube, please consider liking and subscribing the channel so that you can receive notifications of next time we're live. And I'd like to draw your attention to the screen behind me to watch a short video. The best part of this whole uh, retreat is, I'd say the people. I've met a bunch of new girls. They're super nice, super welcoming. And I'd say you come here and you feel like like there's a foundation it's like a firm foundation there's a family that you know like when you need something you need help they're there to help and like it's not awkward or like i like i wouldn't feel shy with coming to any of them for 
like um, for help or like for advice. And I guess that's like the best thing knowing there's people who believe in the same thing that you do and people that have your back for you to lean on. Coming into it, uh, I didn't really know what to expect. You know, I knew it was going to be a church camp. I knew there was going to be games, but I didn't expect this environment. And I didn't expect to see, you know, so many smiles and good faces all around. And um, I want to say thank you to everybody for all the good vibes you guys are spreading. We just did like gardening and a bunch of stuff. Uh, I really like the mixture between like like free time and getting to know people. Because I've come here a couple of times, but it's not the same. Here you stay with them like all day. A lot of familiar faces, I'm learning on a lot of names. Well, also like getting to see the work that I'm getting done. For example, the garden, we uh, we took out a tree. We also like took out all the all the weeds and stuff. So uh, that's fun. So that was a a video from last year's mission camp, um, and it's good to know that the mission camp registrations are finally open. And right now, the price is at its lowest at one hundred and fifty dollars. Um, and that price is going to be available till the end of February. So uh, all the information is available online at the website at petersroad.org. Um, just a quick reminder on three ways to give here at Peters Road. Uh, first of all, online, that's the easiest way to give. Second, uh, via text. Third, via an envelope, you can put that in the box in the front. Uh, if you're a guest here today, please don't feel obligated. We're just glad that you're here uh, and joining us. And uh, with that, please turn and greet one another. Okay, good morning, uh, brothers and sisters. Let's stand up and, uh, in reverence to the reading of the Word of God in Mark chapter 16, verses 14 through 20. Again, Mark 16, verses 14 through 20 in the CSV. I'm reading from the CSV. Later he appeared to the eleven themselves as they were reclining at the table. He rebuked their unbelief and hardness of heart because they did not believe those who saw him after he had risen. Then he said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will accompany those who believe. In my name, they will drive out demons. They will speak in new tongues. They will keep up, they will pick up snakes if they should drink anything deadly it will not harm them they will lay hands on the sick and they will get well so the lord jesus after speaking to them was taken up into heaven and sat down at the right hand of god and they went out and preached everywhere while the lord worked with them and confirmed the word by the accompanying signs. Word of God, you may be seated. That's a very moving introduction, and I enjoy watching it over and over and over. Today, we conclude the series about our church identity, and I hope that this series will be remembered and that it will be referred by everyone uh, as we go on through the year 
we remember who we are. Who we are as a church is something that we must all understand, internalize, live, and proclaim. So, so, so it's, it's, it's a process. This is who we are. And, and our little logo, it just reminds us, reminds us. And so by way of review, let's see who we are, okay? And so in the first installment of the series, we talked about the little Jesus boat, right? And so we are a church that's like a little boat uh, with Jesus as the captain, and then we talked about the sails, and we said that the sails represented our ministries, and that the only way the boat will move was if the sails were filled with what? The, the wind of the Holy Spirit. And then we talked about the fish, okay, and how at the core of who we are as a church is the old Christian symbol, ichthus, okay, Jesus Christ, God's Son and Savior. And then we went and talked about the cross, huh? the mast, the cross. And we said that the cross represented the center of our identity. And it represented the fact that the way that we reach is through, through suffering. We're not allergic to, to suffering. And finally today, we're going to talk about the last part. Do you see the last part? It's like a little wave underneath the boat. And that little wave underneath the boat represents the sea that is beneath our boat. The sea is where we live. The boat is on the sea. Uh, the sea is where we work. The sea is where we minister the sea is where we have been commanded to fish. This whole time we've been talking, the reason why our identity is represented by a boat is not because I like nautical themes. It's because it's who we are. We are a little boat that's on a fishing mission with Jesus. And so we are fishing in the sea. And so fishing is never easy. Fishing takes hard work. I've talked to people who fish. And fishing is always challenging. I want you to watch this short video. Now, after watching that video, how many of you want to go fishing? No. Huh? <laughs> well, as you saw in the video, fishing 
it's not an easy task. And most of the time it requires knowledge, but it requires sacrifice. And so fishing for people is even more difficult because it is filled with challenges that few Christians dare face. And so when we talk about fishing for people, the reaction is the same. Ah, I'm not doing that. Yeah, it looks exciting, but not for me. And so today, uh, we're going to talk about three overwhelming challenges that keep us from fishing for people. And so the first challenge is an obvious one, and it's the challenge of the sea. Now, what do you know about the sea? Okay, uh, I grew up in a little island in Cuba, surrounded by the sea. And so uh, I, I'm, I'm familiar with it since a very young age. But there's people that I know that have never seen the sea until they're adults. And so the sea is, is the challenging part for us. We're in a little boat. And so the sea, you can imagine it, too big. If you look at, at the ocean, too deep. I mean, there's places, there's places in the oceans that we have not even seen yet. I mean, even with all the equipment and technology, they haven't gone down that deep in some of the trenches that are underwater. Uh, it's too cold. I mean, the water right now at, at here, <laughs> where we live in Pompano, is 76 degrees, and it's too cold for me. <laughs> I like it when it's 80. Not the Canadians, they're all in there. Uh, it, it's too wet. Some of us don't like to get wet uh, with the water. And it's too dangerous. I mean, the sea is dangerous. Now, I live in a very small apartment that is about 100 feet away from a very large ocean. <laughs> and so I get to see the sea every day. And, and I have to admit that I've grown in awe of the Atlantic Ocean Sometimes it is so smooth that I'm tempted to walk on it. Today, the waves are about six feet high and the winds were coming from the north, which is unusual. And so it was a very rough sea. And I've seen it in times where we've had, you know, near hurricanes and, and it's, it's impressive. It's impressive. The waves can get pretty high. And so the sea is, is intimidating and indeed, very challenging. Now, I remember a while back, we had been recently married, where my sister, my little sister Annie, came to visit us, and we decided to go on a cruise. <laughs> and so we booked a cruise to the Bahamas. And uh, it was a decent-sized cruise ship. We went to the port of Miami. We got there, and it was very exciting. Uh, for my wife, I think this was one of the first cruises she took, and so... Uh, it was like, oh, wow, this is amazing. And so the crews left the port. It was very beautiful. You know, bon voyage, bon voyage. You all think you're, you know. And then we had dinner, and it was amazing. I mean, that cook, what couldn't, I mean, it was, uh, the menu was very varied. I was so happy. And then all oh, hell broke loose. Uh, it, it was, <laughs> it was a storm uh, for the ages. Uh, now, who takes a cruise in February, right? <laughs> and so it was cheap, so we decided to go. And the waves were about 14 feet high. Now, the big ship that we were in looked very small when you're looking at 14-foot waves. And you know me, I can't be still. So I went to the back of the ship, and you couldn't go outside, obviously, but they had these big windows, and you could see these waves, and then we would go up and down. It was very intimidating, very challenging. I felt like the sorcerer's apprentice in Disney's Fantasia. Woo, woo, and the boat would go and the boat would go down. And the truth is that I didn't panic like some other people, but uh, I did go and get the life jackets for me and for my family. And so there's no doubt that the sea is challenging and intimidated. And most of us, okay, how many of you will take a cruise in the ocean when it's calm? Yeah, all right. Now, when it's not calm, very few of us would actually submit willingly to that danger for nothing. Unless you're in the Navy or unless you're in the Merchant Marines, you're not going to mess with that. And so I want you to understand that just like 
the ocean, the sea, is challenging and intimidating, so is the sea of humanity that is challenging us just like the seven literal seas. And so we are easily overwhelmed by the numbers of people. Now we're not talking, we're talking about billions of people. And we are overwhelmed by the differences in people. I mean, people are so different. They're very different than we are. And then they see us and they think we're different by the sheer numbers of cultures that separate us by the geography and the distances that isolate us. And then as if that's not enough, we have to overcome the cacophony of the languages that seem to us like chatter and noise, but they're full of meaning and understanding. And, and so when we have to face the challenging and the intimidating sea of humanity, what do we do? You know, we turn our backs and we walk away. We're overwhelmed. People who are overwhelmed freeze. Have you noticed that? When you're overwhelmed, you freeze. And so we walk away. And so in the words of that green prophet of modernity, Kermit the Frog. How many of you remember Kermit the Frog? Huh? He said, have you been half asleep and have you heard voices? I've heard them calling my name. Is this the sweet sound that calls the young sailors? The voice might be one and the same. I've heard it too many times to ignore it. It's something that I'm supposed to be. And so the sea is calling. And the sea of humanity is calling us. I don't know how many of you have done what I've done since I was a child. And I can't walk by uh, a conch, you know, one of those big shells without grabbing it. It doesn't matter where it is. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm like that. I grab it and what do you do? You listen for the sound of the sea. And it's there calling us, calling us. And, 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 and so this is the challenge for our life stations. We're sending out we have 17 little life stations now. We're sending out 17 life stations in this immense sea of humanity around us. And it seems like sheer madness to actually believe that not only will they survive, but that they will thrive, grow, and reproduce. But, we believe they're going to be a force to be reckoned just because we're out there fishing. And so if that's not enough to scare you, we are calling you to be a part of a church that goes fishing. We're not making any excuses. We're not making any compromises. We're a church that's going to go do what? Fish. We're going to go fishing. And, and, and so... We're not going to go, I mean, I have a friend of mine that goes fishing and he goes to a bridge <laughs> over a channel. And so he, he catches stuff, but that's not what we're talking about. We're going into the open water. We're going after whatever fish from the sea of humanity God puts on our hook. You saw the video. The guy threw the fly. The line went through the air. It went in the water and boom. That's when it happened. Now we believe that God controls those God encounters. That when you throw your line into the water, we believe, I believe, the Bible says that, that God has a fish waiting for you to grab 
your line. And so we have to go fishing in the sea of humanity and we have to go with poles and lines and we have to go with nets, whatever we have, buckets, anything. We have to fish because we have to take the gospel to the world. That's our mandate. And so the challenge of the sea is confronted by the mandate that we have to take the gospel to the world. Then there's a second challenge that confronts our fishing efforts as well. Now we already talked about the challenge of the sea. Imagine the challenge of the fish, okay? Now we already talked about ichthyology, the study of fish. And one of the things that I found out is that there's a bazillion kinds of fish, okay? You name a color, there's a fish, okay? Uh, there, there, there's fish that are funny looking, there's fish that are huge, there's fish that are minute. I mean, they come in all kinds of different colors, sizes, shapes, you name it. They're too strange. There's some weird looking fish. The fish will not stop to get caught. In other words, if you go fishing, the fish is not going to do you a favor. The fish do not make it easy for the fishermen. The fish do not just jump in the boat. Now, there are some places where they have this phenomenon where the fish jumps in the boat, but that's very unusual. Most fish run from the fishermen. So someone has to go and fish for them. Now, someone once said, I love the church. How many of you love the church? This is what the guy said. I love the church. It's people that I can't stand. And so many times we talk like that and we think like that. We love the world. We love people. In our church, we love people. But I really don't love them that much. Uh, we kind of, okay, you stay in your place and I stay in mine, okay? And, and so many fish are challenging because some fish are downright dangerous. Some fish can kill you. Some fish can actually kill you. Now look, I remember Jonah and the whale, okay, or the big fish, whatever it was, huh? He got swallowed. Imagine a fish that can swallow you. What about sharks, huh? I have a lot of stories about sharks, and they're not fun to, I mean, it's one thing to see the shark uh, with a big window in front. It's another when you're snorkeling, and there's this huge shark looking at you. <laughs> I walked on water that day. Now, lionfish, barracudas, swordfish. You know that if you're in the beach and a swordfish comes through, you're dead. He's going to go right through you. And piranhas. What do you think about piranhas, huh? That's another one. I have one in my office. I can show you. They're all teeth. That's all they are. And so imagine having to go fish for dangerous fish. And so let me take a few minutes just to talk about the methodologies of fishing because it makes sense here in this particular point where we are. There are many ways to fish. Okay? I mean, how many of you know what a Cuban yo-yo is? I mean, that's the basic. I mean, all you need is a string and a hook and you're, you know. Uh, but, but then some people get very sophisticated in their methodologies. And then, of course, there's professional fishermen and fisheries that go out and do all kinds of stuff to fish. Uh, but it seems that most churches and Christian fishers today have concluded that the most efficient and effective way to fish is using what? No, I wish it was that. We use nets. We use nets because we say, why go after one fish with one line when you can go after thousands and according to how big your net is, okay? And, and, and so we go out there and, and, and we use nets because common sense tells us that the bigger the net, the bigger the catch, right? And, and, and so we, we quickly go out there and try to fish the multitudes in the sea. Well, while this seems very practical, most churches are not prepared to deal with an overwhelming bounty of fish. In other words, there's a lot of churches that go out there and fish with nets by the thousands. And then we, we can't process them. And, and so the fish caught in the net die and rot because there's no one to process them. And so we take the fish, we throw them on the beach and we go fishing for more and what happens to the ones on the beach they rot and so fishing with nets I know this is going to sound 
kind of dumb, but it requires networking, okay? <laughs> Fishing with nets requires networking. And what that means is, and, and anyone that's, I mean, I've, I've talked to people who fish with nets, and you have to clean the nets. If you don't clean the nets, they rot. You have to sew up the nets. If they have a hole, they're worthless. You have to, I mean, there's so much stuff that goes on in fixing nets. You have to have the time, the know-how, the resources, and most churches don't have that. And so what happens is they start recycling the nets. And sooner or later, the nets become worthless. And so you have to get a new net. And so then you have churches rebranding, recreating themselves. You have churches that are trying to become something that, that they're not because the old nets are done. And, and so we have to be careful about that. There's nothing wrong. Now, there's nothing wrong with using nets. But it works great as long as it's working, as long as you're doing it right. The problem also is that the fishers of men have forgotten how to fish one-on-one. -on -one. Okay, so when you fish by yourself with a net, there's not a big deal. When you fish one-on-one, -on -one, it's a whole different story. It's a whole different story. And you saw the video. It's the challenge of the fish and you. It's you and the fish. You want to capture the fish. The fish wants to escape from you. Sometimes the fisher wins. Sometimes the fish. And so the battle is always a challenge and one that today in church we walk away. We're not prepared for that. We will, hey, pastor, yes, yes, I'll, I'll give money for buying nets. I'll give whatever it takes. I'll, I'll hold the net. I'll propel the boat. I'll drive the boat. Uh, but I'm never going to go fishing one-on-one -on -one because we're not ready for that. So how many of you are willing and prepared to go fishing in the high seas or in the fast rivers for humanity on a one-on-one -on -one basis? Uh, that's scary okay and, and and so here's a question for all of us individually when was the last time you shared the gospel with someone and they were saved when was the last time that you saw someone get fished straight out of the water on a line uh, and when was the last time you went fishing for people and, and you caught someone? Remember, we exist to fish. I'm not here to make you feel guilty. I'm here to bring our reality to light because ultimately there's the most difficult challenge that we have to face and it's the challenge of Jesus. So we have the challenge of the seas. We have the challenge of the fish. And now we have the challenge of Jesus. Now the challenge of Jesus, we saw it right here in this passage, okay? Okay. He is resurrected. He comes and meets with the 11. Now, these are the, the heavy-duty ones. These are the guys that struck it out for three years. And they were eating together, and he rebuked them. He called them out. Now, think about this. Instead, hey, guys, I'm glad to see you. Hey, what happened? What's wrong with you? So the resurrected Jesus, the first thing he does is he, he rails to his disciples he rebuked their unbelief and hardness of heart. Now, why don't we go fishing? Unbelief. We really don't believe that we have to do it. We really don't believe that he's with us. We really don't believe. We, we have a list of unbeliefs in our hardness of heart. Who cares about the fish? Hey, look, that one got away. Well, sorry to see you go, buddy. I hope you enjoy hell forever. Because that's what happens when we don't fish uh, I mean Jesus said it okay he says that he chided them because they did not believe the people that said that he had been resurrected and so then he said to them go into all the world and preach the gospel to the whole creation whoever believes and is baptized will be saved but whoever does not believe will be condemned so Jesus lays it out. That's what we call the GC, the Great Commission, okay? And so this is the Great Commission in Mark, and he says, you got to go out. Now, this is Jesus' most important command to his disciples when he is resurrected. And he tells them, you got to go out. Now, why didn't he do it? Hey, you're here and back. Why don't you go do it, Jesus? Why don't you show up? Why don't you shine for them? And what he said is, I'm going with you, but you got to do your part. I'm going with you and I am going to be with you and for you in this boat but you're going out there 
you're the one that's got to go fish. And, and what happens is whoever gets fished gets saved. And whoever doesn't get fished gets what? Condemned. That's the reality of eternal significance that we're dealing with. And so Jesus says that these signs will accompany those who believe. And, and so the signs are, are really the works of the Holy Spirit through us, okay? And, and there's a lot of discussion on whether you're going to be drinking uh, poison or picking up snakes. And, you know, I'm not going to go into that. I'm just going to say that there is power when we go fishing. The power of God is with us when we fish. And amazing things happen. And so ultimately, uh, he, he, he goes up, taken into heaven, and sat down at the right hand. Now, it doesn't mean that Jesus is passively watching the game from the press box. What it means is that he is in a different capacity or role. He's saying, hey, guys, let's go win this game. I'm on the sidelines with you. I'm going to be with you playing, but let's go do it together. And so they went out, and what did they do? They preached everywhere, the Lord working with them. Did you hear that? The Lord working with them and confirming the word by the accompanying signs. And so uh, <laughs> I'm going to finish by sharing with you the story of Brother Bielo. Uh, this, I mean, Bielo became famous in Cuba uh, as a... Uh, as a funny guy, and, and I don't think he, he even knew that this was happening to him, but my, uh, my grandfather's brother was a pastor in a little bitty town in Cuba called Hicotea, the turtle, and his name was Jose Maria. And so Jose Maria is baptizing in a river, but the river was uh, fast moving and it had like potholes in it, okay? And so when Jose Maria goes to baptize one of the believers, the guy hits a pothole in the water and he gets sucked into it and, and so the man is drowning now the problem for this new believer that was drowning is that pastor Jose Maria did not know how to swim and so there's brother Bielo and the pastor says brother Bielo please rescue this person that's drowning <laughs> and you would expect the deacon to jump in right guess what he said he said, Pastor, I just bought a new suit and I don't want to get it wet. <laughs> now the guy's drowning. And so Jose Maria takes command of the situation and he says, Brother Bielo, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I command you, dive in and save that person. And so then Bielo, <laughs> as he starts taking off his coat, he says, well, if you put it that way, I don't have a choice. And so he jumped in and rescued the person. Now, it's kind of funny, but that's who we are. That is who we are. We see the person drowning. We hear the pastor calling, telling us, hey, let's do this. And what do we say? I got a new suit. I ain't getting wet. Hey, I, you know. And so we come up with a zillion excuses of why. Oh, no, we're not going to do this. We're not going to do that. We can't do that. We're not going to show up at seven. We're not going to go visiting. We're not going to go one on one. No, we're not knocking on doors. Nobody knocks on doors. Nobody talks to people. People don't want to be confronted. So we come up with a million excuses of why we're not going to dive in and rescue the person that's lost. And so today, we declare open the fishing season for 2022. And just so that you know, in the month of February, March, and April, all we're going to preach is evangelistic sermons. All you're going to hear is evangelism. We're going fishing. But I'm not the only one. It's not y'all coming here. No, no, no. It takes everyone to go fish. And so all of the sermons and all of the teachings are going to be on the book of Mark for three months. Because Mark gives a very vivid description of who Jesus is. And Mark tells us how they fished. And so... If you're not in a life station, join a life station because that's where we're going to learn. That's where we're going to go fishing. And finally, I just want to share with you. Okay, grab your little paper. Okay, if you have a little paper, wave it. See the world? Our church and the world is actually divided into two parts. And you can already know and imagine what those two parts are. One is the fish. There's people out there that are just swimming purposelessly in this endless sea and our job is to get them and so the fish have to be saved 
And then there's the fishers. There's us who are already, who were the fish that got fished and we've been changed to be fishers of people. And so we need to get busy and fish. So I'm going to call you out. Now, my wife and I have made this thing for this year. We want to share Jesus personally with anyone that he puts in our path. And we're working on that. But the only way that those seats are going to be filled is not by throwing out nets and by doing, I mean, we're going to do everything we can. But the best way to fish is one-on-one. With Jesus, with the lines, but you got to be in the river. And you got to do whatever it takes. And so I'm calling you out. If you are listening and the Holy Spirit is calling you to fish, then I'm going to ask you to come here to the front. Just, I mean, it's just a step of commitment. If you believe that God is calling you out to fish, now we're all fishing, we're a fishing church, but, but if you believe, if, even if you're scared, even if you don't know, whatever, just, just say, hey, Lord, I'm, I'm willing, I'm available. Then I'm going to ask you to come here. Now, I'm the first one here. I want to be fishing. I want to go fishing. I want to get people. Young, old, any color, any size, whatever. And so I'm going to ask you to stand. And if the Holy Spirit moves you, I'm going to pray. And while I'm praying, I'm going to ask you to come. Because, hey, we can't fish. I don't, you know, the reason why churches are dying is because they're not fishing. And they think that because they put a want ad on Facebook that is going to work. Come on. And so what we need is people committed to share. And and when we share, Jesus is there to tell us what to say. I mean, the Holy Spirit said, hey, go out there. Don't worry about what you're going to say. I'm going to tell you what you need to say. All we have to do is show up. He does the rest. When was the last time you led somebody to Jesus? Or maybe you've never led somebody to Jesus. Now, can you imagine getting to heaven and God says, how many fish did you get? None. What? So Jesus rebuked his disciples for unbelief and hardness of heart. And today he's doing that with us. Unbelief and hardness of heart. So we pray and we go. Now, if you're not up here, I'm not going to make you feel guilty. I'm sure God's going to take care of that. But um, if you're afraid, or if you're, you don't feel like you know enough, uh, talk to me. We'll work something out. We'll work something out. But just remember, Jesus commands us to go. And the only way this church is going to be around in 30 years is if we fish. If we don't fish today, there's not going to be anything for anybody tomorrow. So we're fishing today for tomorrow. Father God, thank you because you have called us to fish. And Lord, the challenges are overwhelming. The challenge of the sea, Lord, uh, it's scary. It's overwhelming and it's especially at night, it's awful. The challenge of the fish, Lord, they're so different. They're so difficult to, to understand and catch. But ultimately, we have the challenge of your command. And Lord, we say yes. Lord, we need your courage. We need you through your spirit to move us and take the opportunities that you give us, those God encounters that we have every day. And Lord, give us the words of what's happening in us. Give us the signs. Whatever will move people, Lord, give us the power. We want to fish because you have commanded us to fish. And in your name, we're going to go fishing. We want to be a fishing church, Lord, because that's the only way the church has survived through the ages, by fishing. So, Lord, I thank you for each and every person that's here before you. Lord, we're committed to you. Give us the opportunity with all the people around us. Give us the wisdom. Give us the words. Give us whatever it takes. Help us to go fish just like that video, so that we can get in the river and hang on to the line and pull in 
the reel so that we can bring home the fish. Lord, only you can do this in us. And Lord, I pray for everyone in our church so that we can understand the importance of the fishing industry for us as we go unto all the world in your name and we fish. This is our desire in Jesus Christ our Lord. This is our prayer. And the people of God said, Amen. Amen.